In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I beg your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. In this fourth Sunday of Lent, we will read in the second reading these revolutionary words of St. Paul to the Ephesians. But God, who is rich in mercy, by reason of his very great love, wherewith he has loved us even when we were dead by reason of our sins, brought us to life together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together, and seated us together in heaven in Christ Jesus, that he might show in the ages to come the overflowing riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. These words are revolutionary, as I said, because we can think of a God who is all just and we expect God to be all just and we can think that he punishes the sinner for his transgression and that would be the right thing to do and we can think of a God who creates out of nothing And that is a mighty spectacle that we witness when we read the first lines of Genesis. But a God who forgives is a God who doesn't create out of nothing, but creates out of less than nothing, if that can be because the sinner actually, we could say, we can think, deserves a lot less than simply being annihilated. He recreates us from, from a deeper hole than when he created us out of nothing. Wow, a God who forgives, that is something that has to shock us and has to give us a lot of consolation because he forgives us. And in so doing, he is also all just. As long as we are willing to meet him in the truth by admitting our sins and willing and being willing to convert, to change, to change our lifestyle. God is rich in mercy. What do rich people do? Rich people, I don't know if you have ever had the chance of hanging around somebody who's rich. Uh, when I was young, I, I, uh, I had the, the chance of uh, meeting someone habitually actually, uh, who was very rich. He was a multimillionaire. And every time I would see him, he was one of my family's friends. We would see him at church. Whenever he would say hello to me, he would take out a $20 bill and crumble it up in his hand and then shake my hand, give me the $20 bill and say, take your sisters out for a pizza. And uh, every time he would do that, he would just, and I, I would be impressed that while well, I was, I don't know, 10, 11, 12, he would give me a $20 bill every time. I don't know what I did with the $20 bills every week, but anyway, 
a different story. But the, the fact is that this man was rich and he didn't care what he did with his money or he wasn't too careful as far as counting pennies. He was liberal. He gave liberally. And he was very generous. And that's what people do when they're rich. They, they give and they don't look too carefully because they can afford it. And that's what God does when he is rich in mercy. He's always rich in mercy, but that's what he does. Because he is rich in mercy, he forgives us liberally. Which means that all we need to do is open up the door a little bit, and then he comes in with the full power of his grace. In the letter to the Romans, there is a beautiful passage where St. Paul is awed by our Lord's generosity in saving us, in forgiving us, in dying for us. And he says, For scarcely in behalf of a just man does one die. Yet perhaps one might bring himself to die for a good man. Well, that is true. We, we can think that it is very difficult to die for, for a, a man who is good, you know. I don't know. Think of uh, Mother Teresa or St. John Paul II. If they were to tell us, you know, can you die? Can you give your life for, for, for these people? I mean, we would say, yeah, that would be great. I mean, it would, it would be very difficult for us to do so, but maybe, you know, one out of Ten people would actually muster up the the strength to say, I will give my life so that they can live. I will give both of my kidneys so that both of these people can live because they are so good. And um, that would be an amazing act of generosity on our part. However, Paul says that God is charitable towards us because when as yet we were sinners, Christ died for us. Now imagine the same, the same scenario, but with two different people. Not Mother Teresa and St. John Paul II, but with a criminal. And maybe a criminal who has harmed your own family. Or, or somebody, you know, you can't stand. Your, your worst enemy. Would you die for that person? Somebody who has hurt you a lot? Well, that's why God is so charitable. Because as yet, when as yet we were sinners, Christ died for us. That's how rich God is in mercy. When as yet we were sinners, he sent his only son to save us. Amazing. What an amazing thing. And the fact is that if he had not done that, if he had not forgiven us, it would really be impossible to live with ourselves, with our iniquities, with our crimes, with our sins. Lord, we want to thank you because you have, you, you have redeemed us, you have bought us back with the price of the blood of your Son. As the psalmist says in Psalm 130, if you, O oh Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. Wow. Lord, if you should mark iniquities, my iniquity, who could stand? Nobody would be able to stand in front of you. It would be very difficult for, for anybody, really, to, to be able to live with himself or herself. And that's how good you are with us. Salvation is a gift. And it is not a conquest of our own. We don't forgive our own sins. You know, I had a little kid who asked me, Father, do you, do you have to go to confession? Can you just forgive yourself? I said, you know, I, I never thought about that, actually. You know, like, I'm forgiving myself. I absolve me from my sins, you know, in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. I can't do that. I can't do that. I need someone else, a priest, even the Pope, whoever, needs somebody else to forgive him 
or to administer the forgiveness of God, which is a gift. It's always a gift. Amazing. This is something that we have to really take notice of, how much our Lord loves us, but He wants us to change. And that's how that's the only condition. He can forgive any sin, and He will forgive even Judas's sin of betrayal, as long as we are willing to go back, as long as we're willing to go back to Him. Look at what the prophet Isaiah says, or what our Lord says through the prophet Isaiah. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Correct oppression. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Wow, this is the promise of our Lord, that even if our sins are ugly and they are so red, crimson, and they are scarlet, that we shall be forgiven. We shall become like, like snow. We will be cleaned like snow, white as snow. If forgiveness is a gift, and we really can't do anything about it. What can, then what do we do? Well, we can make ourselves worthy of receiving this gift. This is where our struggle lies, actually, in being humble, to always be able to receive the gift of forgiveness. And what does that entail? Well, if you think of a beggar, A beggar doesn't deserve anything, and anything that that beggar gets is a gift from the person who gives him, you know, uh, uh, some coin or, or, or some donation. But they at least have to open up their hand to receive the gift. If they don't, if they cannot open their hand, if they don't make themselves capable of receiving the, the donation, then how could they be given what they're asking for? And that's where our struggle lies, in opening up our soul to God. And that means humility. That means we need to recognize our sins. That means we need to trust in our Lord's forgiveness. Because sometimes our Lord forgives us, but we don't want to forgive ourselves. And that's pride. That's pride. You might think that that's uh, that that's humility in, in you know in, in, in wanting to be in wanting to hurt because we have sinned and no oh, I don't know I'm so bad I'm so bad. Well, saying you're so bad you're so bad is really pride because you don't want to accept the reality of things, which is the fact that God is your Father and He has forgiven you, and that we're not slaves; we are children. Look at how much our Lord loves us. This is what St. Maria says about our Father God. He loves each one of us more than all the mothers in the world can love their children, helping us and inspiring us, blessing and forgiving. How often we've, we have erased the frowns of our parents' brows, telling them after some prank, I won't do it again. Maybe that same day we fall again, and our Father, with feigned harshness in his voice and the serious face, reproves us, while at the same time his heart is softened because he knows our weakness. Poor boy, he thinks. How hard he tries to behave well. And then St. Jose Maria concludes, We have to be completely convinced, realizing it to the full, that our Lord, who is close to us and in heaven, is a Father and very much our Father, emphasizing our Father. Our Lord always forgives us. And this is, this is what we have to always remember, because when we, when we want to 
take our spiritual life in our own hands and and we want to give salvation grant salvation to ourselves and maybe that means in our idea being perfect then we'll despair because we will fall every day i don't know if you if you're familiar with the story of les mis les miserables but you know in that story we have the character of of the policeman javert who is totally unforgiving totally unforgiving he's very hard on jean valjean you know jean valjean yes he was a criminal but he changed his ways he was very merciful on other people and he he helped a lot of people he became the mayor of, of the town where he lived after he had gone to prison and 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 well why was jean valjean so merciful because somebody had mercy on him and it was that that bishop whose can, uh, candelabra he was stealing and the bishop you know forgave him gave him to him let him take him it's a great story he was he received mercy and because he received mercy he was then able to give mercy unto others but javert the cop who was always about justice and only justice and hard cold justice he could never forgive because he he you could you could say that he did not have you know a sense that god was a father or he did not understand even human fatherhood everything had to be paid everything had to be made up for everything had to be punished he broke the law he must be punished period there's no there's no going beyond that script for him well that reality that that outlook that he, that javert has is really false it doesn't exist it's kind of an ultra puritanical way of looking at life which which is not real because our father god is rich in mercy as saint paul tells us and if he were to look at our iniquities lord who could stand who could stand in front of you he has forgiven us he has forgiven javert he has forgiven the javerts of the world and he has forgiven the jean valjeans of the world and what's the difference between the two that one notices that that god has forgiven him and he makes himself capable of that forgiveness and the other one closes himself and actually cannot live with himself if he is not perfect lord if you mark our iniquities who could stand our lord who is rich in mercy will always forgive us that's the one thing that we can learn today look at what saint maximus of turin says and so my brothers each of us ought surely to rejoice on this holy day let no one conscious of his sinfulness withdraw from our common celebration nor let anyone be kept away from our public prayer by the burden of his guilt if you have guilt don't worry you can come to the church to the who has her arms wide open to the sacrament of penance and come and be embraced by the mercy of god just like the prodigal son who came back to his father and got the kiss the hug the sandals the tunic the fatted calf killed the symphony the party the oil you know you could think everything just the whole fatherly affection fatherly acceptance of who he is what the father couldn't allow was to have his son be so beaten up and tattered and our father god when he sees us in our state the state we are in because of our guilt he puts on he covers our nakedness and he puts on everything the state of grace cheerfulness you know the, the, the this great divine filiation that we have from our baptism is restored once again 
to if you have guilt, the burden of your guilt, come to the church. Come to confession. Come and be embraced. Sinner he may be indeed, St. Maximus continues, but he must not despair of pardon on this day, which is so highly privileged. For if a thief could receive the grace of paradise, think of the good thief, how could a Christian be refused forgiveness? If a thief, you know, moved the heart of Christ on the cross, how could a Christian, you and me, not move the heart of Christ much more so? Lord, you who are rich in mercy, if you were to mark our iniquities, who could stand? You forgive us. Make me, Lord, today capable of receiving your forgiveness. Help me to be humble so that I recognize my sin. And then make me humble enough not only to recognize it, but to actually go back to you through the sacraments so that I can then show others this great love that you have shown me. If God has loved us so much, says St. John, we also ought to love one another. That's the conclusion. That's the conclusion. But, but that means that we have to always keep examining ourselves, kind of a life of examination and the life of mercy towards the others. That's the only way, actually, we're, we're going we're gonna to be able to show God's forgiveness to other people if we don't ever think ourselves as beyond able to sin. St. Jose Maria said that he saw himself as capable of the worst errors and horrors. You know, in, in Spanish they rhyme errores y horrores of the worst criminals in history, always. And that's what actually, that possibility of evil that he saw in his own life, actually, he said, made him actually hold tighter to the hand of his Father God. That's what we want to do today with our Lord. Lord, I want to hold on tighter to your hand because I see myself in danger all the time as long as I am in this world. And I want to be very close to you. Really change, try to change my lifestyle. That's what I want to do. Look at what St. Augustine says. St. Augustine, who was a convert himself, and, um, and fought a lot, struggled a lot to change his lifestyle and to allow God's mercy to enter into his soul. He says, If I admit my fault, then you, Lord, will pardon it. Let us never assume that if we live good lives, we will be without sin. And he knew that, even if we are good people. And St. Paul knew that. You know, Just because I nothing, uh, my conscience doesn't you know, tell me that I have done something wrong, am I without sin? No. If we live good lives, we, let us never assume that if we live good lives, we will be without sin. Our lives should be praised only when we continue to beg for pardon. But men are hopeless creatures, and the less they concentrate on their own sins, the more interested they become in the sins of others. They seek to criticize, not to correct. Unable to excuse themselves, they are ready to accuse others. This was not the way that David showed us how to pray and make amends to God. When he said, I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. He did not concentrate on others' sins. He turned his thoughts on himself. He did not merely stroke the surface, but he plunged inside and went deep down within himself. He did not spare himself and therefore was not impudent in asking to be spared. When we stop examining our conscience, as we can see, we start examining the conscience of other people. 
And that's what we want to avoid. We want to avoid judging. And the way we're going to do that is by being very merciful with them and, 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 and tough on ourselves. John Paul II was asked one time if his father was a tough father. And he said, yes, he was a very tough father. And then he added, on himself. He was very tough on himself, but very merciful with everybody else. That's the way we're going to be merciful. If we're tough on ourselves, we, we have to be, we have to realize that we are the ones who have sinned, and others too, but we don't have to worry about them. We will simply, we can console our Lord for the sins we see that others commit, but but let us pray also for them. Because, you know, we have to pray that they become worthy and capable of receiving the forgiveness of God, which is available, which is always available. See, the mercy of God, God who is rich in mercy, is like Niagara Falls. There's an infinite amount of water, of mercy, of grace, of forgiveness. But we have to go there with, you know, with, not with a thimble, not with, with a little spoon, but with, with a huge tank. You know, and, and that capacity to receive forgiveness is, is up to us to increase and to develop. And the way we do that is by forgiving other people. When we forgive somebody else, we, we, we exchange our thimble for our glass. And when we forgive someone, you know, in, um, more quickly, without harboring evil thoughts, immediately, then we exchange the glass for you know a bigger container, a pot, a pot, and then a big tanker, so we can get as much forgiveness of our sins ourselves. Not only should we forgive others because we want to be forgiven, as we say in the Our Father, but we want to identify ourselves with Christ and we want to show the love of Christ. As St. Paul says to the Philippians, says, have the same mind, the same sentiments as Christ did. You know, the, the sentiments of the heart of Christ. And Christ, basically, towards us, he only had, we could say, one sentiment, mercy. He wanted to have mercy on us. He came down for this purpose, to have mercy on us. And sometimes people think that, you know, it is difficult to forgive and that they're just incapable of forgiving because the wrong that they have received from someone, you know, is so, so difficult to forgive. And that may be true. The scar may be extraordinary. But look at what the Catechism says. It is not in our power to not feel, excuse me, I read it wrong. It is not in our power not to feel or to forget an offense, but the heart that offers itself to the Holy Spirit turns injury into compassion and purifies the memory in transforming the hurt into intercession. It is not in our power to forget or not to feel. We will feel the indignation. We will feel you know, the, the hurt. But when we, when we are injured and we, we try to forgive, then we turn, we turn that injury into compassion and it purifies the memory, turning the hurt into intercession. We're now praying for that person. And this brings a lot of joy. This brings us a lot of joy. If it is very difficult for us to do that, well, think of, um, let's think of our own sins. Think of Scrooge, you know, think of uh, A Christmas Carol you know, by Charles Dickens, who really was, um, you know, that character, he was evil, he was terrible with others. He didn't have any mercy on him. But when he was shown who he really is, you know, through the ghost of Christmas past and present and future, he changed. He changed. He realized that he was worse. He was worse. And this is what we will, this is what will happen to us when we consider ourselves and continue to examine our consciences. 
we will realize that we are worse than others. And we will have compassion, mercy on those people who don't, let's face it, they don't deserve compassion. But we don't either. We didn't either. And God gave us compassion. That's, that's the amazing thing. For scarcely in behalf of a just man does one die, yet perhaps one might bring himself to die for a good man. But God commends his charity towards us because when as yet we were sinners, Christ died for us. Amazing. Amazing. Whether it be being forgiven by our Lord, who is rich in mercy, or when we ourselves forgive, we, we access an amazing torrent of graces which bring us uh, a deep joy. It's a, a deep and lasting joy. That's why perhaps today is a good day to think about the mercy of God, the mercy that He has had for us, and the mercy that we could have on others. And we could see it as an opportunity to grow, especially today, I say, because it's Letare Sunday. It's the fourth Sunday of Advent when the Church's liturgy precisely begins with that word in Latin, which is Letare, rejoice. 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 Why? Because God has had, has have, has had mercy on us each one of us and we we didn't deserve to be forgiven but we are forgiven now it's like winning the lottery totally undeserved but here we are we have it it is now up to us to distribute it and to give it away that we may not lose it and that's the way it actually works let us turn to mary who is the mother of mercy, as we call her, mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. Let us turn to her with confidence, as the author of the letter to the Hebrew says, let us turn to her with confidence that we may obtain mercy. That's uh, what seems to me repeated often, that aspiration from the letter to the Hebrews. Let us turn to the throne of glory with confidence that we may obtain mercy. She will gain us the forgiveness that we need when, when we need it, when we need to ask for forgiveness. And she will help us to actually see the, the virtues of those people that have offended us and that need our forgiveness as well. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations which you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.